love to use the word school. Hein? You actually have heard of a Japanese name like Yoko Ryu, Take no Ichi Ryu, Kodaku Ryu. The word Ryu, that we translate by uh, school, uh, in Japanese doesn't mean school. It means a uh, current way of thinking, fashion, uh, continuity. So uh, when the people have uh, created uh, a new way of using the body or weapon, it was not something uh, completely set. It was just an idea that helped you to survive. And you need to wait at least five or six generations after, after that what was just an idea becomes something very sophisticated, well explained as a school. And at this moment, you use the word school. And mostly you use the word school when it's a peaceful area, when you don't need any more to fight. And the beginning of the school, uh, the beginning of the art is what you need to understand is the first level, the first level, what we call shoden, uh, the first transmission, the first level, is the higher, highest transmission. So they used to teach always the top technique in order that if one day you lose the scroll, you lose uh, something, you always, always can make, find your way. You cannot lose the school. Why? Because you understand what is the more important and you can make it. So from that you can beat what you want. Nine school means nine life, and you don't have nine life. Okay? So you need to understand the principle that we call Nippo Daishutsu. And this law starts from Ichimonji. That's why Yoko Koshitsu and Kotori Kokujutsu, actually Koshitsu and Kokujutsu used to be the basic of Ikaryu and Kogaryu, the two uh, school, main school of the Ninja province. And Kokujutsu and Koshitsu is the basic for using everything. Of course, you can do much more here. You can, when you strike here, huh? you can do one, two, you can do one kick at the same time. You can do what you want. But what you want is not what the soke wants. I mean, in Japan, what you want is what you want. If you do correctly the first thing, after what you want goes without saying. That's why it's important first to limit ourselves. Limit ourselves and something correct. When this correct thing is known, respect it, polish it, practice it through the years, what you want become useless. Because what you want is desire. And martial art is to go against your own desire. If you really want to seek the real... Uh, that's why it's close with religion at this moment. No desire, because no intention. If you have intention, you did it. You understand? That's why on the martial art, all the primary school, Takenu, Chiryu, Kageryu, Kashima Shinyu, Kashima Shinkoryu, Tenshin Shoden, Katori Shinkoryu, Nenryu, all those primary school, first school, there is a very strong rule. Taryu Shiai Nash. There is no fight against other school. Why? If the guy loses, the winner knows about the technique of the school first. Second, you never show the school. You never show that you practice martial art. Technique, sometimes even the name of the school, sometimes people practice the technique but doesn't know the name of the school and the name of the technique. It was like a wish word. Huh? Like at the primary beginning of the book on the religion, you have something like that, it was already a, a treasure. So you keep it. So martial art was like that. You, you should not attack, you should not offense. And there is most of the school, most of the great fondator never, never uh, accepted the, the place of uh, shogun instructors. Because we know that life is made of changement and one shogun will overpass another one, etc. etc. And, and if they are with them, they need to commit suicide. All the top masters never commit seppuku. Never. That was just for stupid samurai, <coughs> for the honor. So the life is more value than the honor itself. Life on itself is an honor. So here, if you show, if you do, that's wrong. That's why, no intention, no desire. You need to practice for the sake of the practice, for the sake of love and for the protection of the people you love. And again, in the world of protection, you need to understand the word cause, which cause. So imagine now, for me, I'm just saying very uh, easy word, it's not uh, very deep or very clever. Imagine someone like Hasumi Sensei, huh? the level of uh, the man. The reason of why he practiced, the reason of his practice, the reason of the practice of Takamatsu Sensei, and before that. And try to look if the way you practice you, I don't ask the same. 
But if you respect that already, the way you practice will be more uh, on the right way. Of course, if you like to do things in order to, ah, I like my friend, it's a group, it's a social, social stuff, it's good. It's like doing chess, but you cannot call this martial art. You call this a uh, human relation. Martial art is something more deep. It's important that you know that when you do that, after you can choose. And of course, the choice is about you. And it's very important for all of you to understand that. There is, you see a master like Hatsumi Sensei who have uh, I don't think we can use the word knowledge for Hatsumi Sensei because he is a knowledge, a human knowledge, walking world knowledge. And uh, you look him moving, he have a certain age, he have a certain process on the body, he have met the right master, the right master put his life on his body. And this man is not a man, he's a part of a, yes, a, an art. And when he moves, you see, his form is very difficult to identify because we don't have the process, we don't have what needs, what we need, the, the, the missing piece to understand that. So, oh, he moves like this, oh, he uses his elbow, oh, he uses his hip. He, for him, body doesn't have the same definition. Elbow doesn't have the same definition. When, for example, he said, here, for a Hiji here I use my elbow, but his body is already on the angle. Here I use my hip, so people say I use my hip. The way he uses the hip, the way he's been educated in the way he uses his body, the way he disciplines his body, it's out of our definition, completely different. So that's why they said in the martial arts you need to forget yourself in order to grasp what there is around in front of you. Because copy, and there is an old saying by uh, Confucius, if you copy the master, you die. If you follow him and you inspire yourself from him, you survive. The case of martial art is different because the purpose is different. You practice for challenge yourself every day. Not challenge yourself, challenge someone. Challenge yourself. A fight against yourself. It's a fight against uh, your bad uh, habits. Uh, the way you are, for example, if you have a way to answer, to talk to people, which is a little bit, uh, you know, disrespectful. Uh, it's also a way to be aware of every details of life, everything. So for martial artists at that time, it's to be aware of all the situation. Who can kill me? If, for example, I eat like that, I cannot see here, so I'm going to eat like this. Like this, my eyes are everywhere. I cannot do big movement. I don't like this. I can fall like this. And so for a master, it was like that. So the, the art we practice is created in this way. So when you polish your art and your body uh, um, by following this kind of form, it's changed you. I think that every moment, try to realize and try to always have in mind that each of your movements you do, even if it's just a step or just a shift, inside there is what you're looking for. There is a connection with the art. Even the way of sitting, the way of eating, the way of talking with people, the way of walking. And if you start to think like that, even if you have to do washroom or whatever, huh? wash dishes, clean the house, in all those movements there is martial art, there is an efficiency to find. If you don't do it, what you do, it's not martial art, it's just frequent class. It's just sports. Martial art, it's everything. It's like, like a religious man. He doesn't pray only when he goes uh, to the synagogue or uh, to the church. Huh? Every moment of life is a dedication. Ded he dedicates, he devotes himself to God. Just the fact of drinking a water become a prey. Huh? And at this moment, it's not anymore Bible he read, it's a connection direct. Huh? Think about that. Those techniques are made, I'm sorry to say it, but in under blood of people. People have sacrificed their life. Some people have lost family, everything, just to find one technique correct. Some people did revenge for <laughs> understanding those techniques. So they are born, they are created under something maybe nasty, maybe wrong, or maybe glorious, or maybe noble, to protect yourself or whatever. So because of this, it's not something light. That's why I said to some people, put weight to what you do. Weight doesn't mean you put uh, your weight. 
Normally in martial arts, you should use your weight correctly. So it's, it goes without saying. Put weight is put meaning. Be there, stay on the line, do correct, push him to move correct. Some people said real attack. It's impossible to do a real attack on the, on the dojo. You can fake the real attack. And people who can do real attack are already in a level of control, a lot of things. Huh? It's not rushing yourself, it's not to rush too much. You rush, there is always a payback. Everyone understand? I know you're tired. I know it's more difficult to focus. I know all those kind of things because myself, I consider myself as a student. But this is the moment in classical martial art, and especially in Ninjutsu. This is the moment where some are gonna endure, persevere, and go deeper, and some are gonna stop. It's not a question of uh, victory or uh, fail or lose. It's who can keep on going, keep on endure, remind patients. And that's why it's connecting with life, nature, and many things, because everyone can do that. But it's until which limit, which deepest. Yeah? Everyone are tired. Always think you're not alone. It will give you a little bit of boost. But it's very important. At the moment you're tired, the moment your energy is going to fail, your focus, your, your um, concentration is going to go down, this is the moment where something might happen. That's why holy men of the past, you can find this everywhere. They always said the critical time, the more interesting time, moment, is at the end. And it's always like this in life. You sign a contract at the end. You talk one hour for nothing, but actually, and if you rush too much, that's why wait. One thing. So in order to understand art of sword, you need to understand long weapon. Huh? And long weapon are the best for uh, educated and cultivate both sides of the body because you practice, there is both sides. In the sword, there is only one side. And there is no uh, record that said you should practice the sword only from one side. Most of the primary school, you practice both sides because it's war, you need to face any type of man, whatever you have on the, uh, whatever the weapon you have and whatever the hand you use. That's why each crawl, it's always writing at the end, side you practice both sides. Mm? I don't know if they knew uh, all the uh, impact uh, neurophysiologic. I don't think so. But for sure, when you have to survive, you need to know both sides. If you get hurt from the right hand, how do you do? You said, stop, please, uh, I will come to back tomorrow uh, when everything will be all right. No, he kill you and uh, take all your family and uh, that's not cool. You need to move always from Kamai to Kamai in order that when you do a movement, he cannot touch you, he cannot grasp you, he cannot hurt you. The Kamai is like your own shield, your own protection. Everything you do with Kamai, every time you take a Kamai, it's a way of lock, avoid, move the sword and the center of your enemy. Each time, Kamae should be this in your mind, not just a... If it's this, you make a big mistake. That's why after Hatsumi Sensei, and he have the right to say, like many masters, Kamae is wrong. Form is wrong, because he makes you stiff. Hmm? You need to understand the form, or purpose, in order to break after the form. Huh? Kamae is your life. Of course, there is no form, but you can understand there is no form when you have the form. The question is, you cannot grasp something that you don't know, that you don't see. We talk about spirit, you talk about the heart, you talk about the muscle, but you don't know what happened inside. You don't know how is it. It's dark, you need the light. The light is the form. So again, if your form is right, your shadow is. Kamai means spirit attitude. Kamai. Most of people translate this by position. Kamae, the word Kamae comes from no. No, via the oh, the no. And on the no, they create this. And martial artists didn't have words for explain the word, the method. So they use word everything. Oh, that's so great. Ah, that's cool. That looks like what I want. But doesn't mean it's martial art. So they use the word Kamae, which means spirit attitude. Kamae! 
Ready? Here, not here. Here first. But kamae means also what your body reflects. Your kamae must reflect what you really are inside. And when you are nothing, you become muge, move form, without form, formless. Huh? And if we look the process of ninjutsu, the process of the Hatsumi Sensei's practice, which is the more important, and Takamatsu Sensei's practice, because now we have the DVD of Takamatsu Sensei, so we can have a form, we can have an image, you know, to compare. It's like, for example, when you, you start technique, you don't know how to teach. Tak, we here, one, one, two, Ichimonji no kamae. And when I step for the ski, you can move. The, of course, this normally, this, I should not talk about that. When you start to do things like that, it's not koryu anymore. We call this yakusoku, yakusoku waza, yakusoku katachi. This kind of thing are put for people who don't know martial art. It's, for, it's a sports way of looking koryu. In Koryu, there is no things like that. Classical school. He attacks, you need to be able to do the technique. If you cannot understand this type of distance by yourself, just by your noise and by everything you have, you cannot survive. Why? Because all those techniques were practiced already by people who had experience of war and fighting. This is one of the reasons that when Hatsumi Sensei had met Takamatsu Sensei, when he had 27 years old, he was already a master of many things. And he could see the value of that very deeply. How a master like that could still exist and know things like that? How a, a way of moving like this could exist? I'm 27, five dan of judo, six dan of karate. I'm talking with all the top men. I know Weshiba, Mabuni. I do boxing, Chinese martial art. I have already more than 100, scro 100 scroll. I can beat anyone. I know all the martial art that exists. And this old man, 70 years old, does something I never see before. Let me know why. And you know the history after he became the soke huh, of the ninth school. When your eyes can see big what is small, do you understand once again? When your eyes can see clearly, clearly means all the image of a small details, I let you imagine what you can see on people's movement. This is what ninjutsu is about. That's why ninjutsu is invisible. Invisible because it escapes from the regular image of using the body.
for people like Hatsumi Sensei and even Shizuka Sensei in a certain level, the same things, for them this is not nothing. This is not nothing. Huh? They will not give you what they sacrifice a full life if they doesn't trust you. And if you transpose this for Takama Sensei and before that, and the time where <coughs> a knowledge like that was a meaning of a survive or being dead, the choice of a student of a discipline was very heavy. 